but just seeing her in that condition was it's unimaginable like i would hi guys welcome to the fourth episode of the podcast today we have gayu with us uh uh Aryan is not going to be part of this podcast anymore we don't talk to him uh, it's done <laughs> we kicked him <laughs> we kicked him out because the you human guys yeah. the humanities lobby was yeah, like, fighting against lobby him sent us like 250k yes, uh, so we just had to kick yeah, him out and yeah. now we've got a better replacement power yeah. of humanities we got the ultimate humanities girl guy you <laughs> she's hot and oh. smart <laughs> questionable <laughs> band bitches who do humanities <laughs> Yes so uh, guys how's your how's your week last week how was it stop asking that with a smile on your face okay. what is wrong with you how was your week yeah i mean my week was possibly the worst week i've ever had in my life so far um i lost my nala who is um the fifth member of my family my little sister my dog um it happened like extremely suddenly so we weren't like prepared to lose her at all like in a span of 24 hours she went from being like a perfectly fine healthy little girl to not being there anymore so i mean i don't think people understand the gravity of losing a pet unless you've actually owned one i mean i don't want to say owned but like unless you've had one in your family because like it's just like people assume that okay yeah whatever i mean like they're there but it's not considered they're not considered a part of your family as such not like a family member but for a person who's had a pet like they are everything because the kind of love that your pet gives you is it's like it it doesn't you can't equate that to anything and it's so hard to explain this because i mean it's so easy to communicate regularly when it comes to you know normal things like language is like a perfect medium of communication but when it comes to like your your pets your furry babies it's so hard because i feel like there are not enough words to express what you feel um because even when you're talking to your <laughs> pet right it's not like you're talking to them in words it's just gestures and noises and stuff um but yeah i don't know it's just hard i don't think any of this made sense to anyone but <laughs> But do you find it difficult to, uh, like people who don't own pets or people you don't know that well in general, do you find it difficult to communicate this thing because you feel like, oh, they don't understand the motion here? Yeah, I feel like obviously some people are aware, right, of the connection a person can have with an animal. Um, so they still understand what it is to lose someone who's been in your house every day. um and then suddenly to not have that happy presence i think some people who are aware of this even though they don't have pets of their own will understand but on the most people just don't equate this as a loss in the family they think it's okay you'll get over it in a day or two and i don't think i don't see myself getting over it or feeling the need to get over it anytime soon like i mean she made our home like heaven and now i mean i don't know she's going to convert heaven into something even more beautiful when she's there so i don't think people will understand the emotion unless they themselves go through something similar yeah. and it's fair i mean i don't expect everyone to understand what i'm going through but do you feel uncomfortable telling somebody who doesn't I have mean, a pet i mean i'm i don't feel uncomfortable i can understand why people would feel uncomfortable i am okay like it's okay i i anyway i feel like it's like everybody reacts to grief differently and everybody also as a recipient of someone talking about grief reacts differently mm. right like so i feel like it's every person has a different approach to consoling people and stuff so it's fine i mean also I, i'm personally i'm not someone who likes to um talk about my own grief with other people because i don't think people are interested in knowing your sad stories mm. so i guess i mean it's different for everyone I think all of us were pretty distraught by that news because especially most of you guys have spent a lot of time with Nala as well and personally I'm not I've always been a bit scared of dogs I've been chased by one too many stray dogs and I've always had a fear of them But you but, actually really like Nala Yeah so Nala was one of the few dogs like I can count it in fingers the one of dogs that I've bonded with yeah, but very so, ca- the calmest dog Yeah ever. no the first time I met her I was scared because she's kind of big and she looked at me I looked at her 
I screamed because I thought she wanted like attack me, but she was just scared of me. Yeah. And she screamed because she was scared of me. I remember this moment so well. So, Fahim has entered the house and he's looked towards Nala. Yeah. Nala has gone to the door because she heard the bell ring, and she's looked at Fahim. And Nala had this peculiar thing where she would look with one paw up because she's ready to like flee the scene. Yeah, I thought she was ready. To attack. <laughs> and they both have made eye contact, and both of them have like screamed and like gone in opposite directions. Yeah. But yeah, I think all of you guys have met Nala and had different equations with her. Like Sharan used to stay over at my place when I will cry for sure. <laughs> Sharon has stayed over at my place when all of us are traveling and obviously because we have help at home but we've never wanted to leave her yeah. and I mean it's not like we don't trust our help our help has been so distraught by the loss of Nala because they are so attached to her but still I mean Nala's a spoiled girl so we were like okay Sharon will stay over and she'll have fun and she used to when the family was around she would give Sharon no attention <laughs> <laughs> but the minute that. we're gone, Sharan, she's like all over Sharan. She's yeah, kissing him, licking him, everything. Side chick. Yeah, <laughs> she's my girlfriend. Nobody knew about her. <laughs> she wouldn't post you on socials. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but it's I mean, okay. I, I I always used to think you know people who have pets are absolutely crazy because a pet would normally not outlive you. Because maximum they would live like maybe 15, 15, 16 years. And I'm like, why would you go through that pain of like uh, having, one. having one and then losing them and then feeling that pain. And then I'm like, I met Nala and like, I understood why people have pets because it was such an enriching experience to, yeah. to be around her all the time. And yeah, it was, I'll cry more. So I don't want to cry anymore. So I... Uh, <laughs> There was this um, video that a friend of mine shared, Atu. Um, it's about Andrew Garfield talking about grief. And he says the same thing, right? Like, you never have enough time with anyone. And grief is basically the unexpressed love you have for that person. Um, so the more you talk about it, like, I mean, obviously, every person is different. But it's a beautiful thing only at the end of the day. because Yeah, the more you have like, yeah. emotions for that person. Yeah. It's, it's just unexpressed love. Like, I keep thinking about it like... The day before also, it's not like I knew she was going to go. So I went about my day thinking, yeah, she's just got a fever. She'll be fine. And I left the house thinking I'll come back and she'll be okay. But just seeing her in that condition was its unimaginable. Like, I would... I mean, I don't know. I, <laughs> like, there's nothing to say, you know, because... The whatever she was with us only for four years in totality and like in coaching with us for only a year and a half but in that year and a half she has possibly given us more happiness than I have ever had in my life and it's insane because you never attribute that to Nala but now that she's gone it's you like know. you know yeah okay let's move on <laughs> How the fuck are we going to segue from this, man? Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, so in conclusion, it's been a tough week. Do you guys want to take a minute? Or? No, no, I'm okay. No, I'm fine. So talking about Badi and open high <laughs> <laughs> I, Just uh, being the bad guy. <laughs> Someone had to do it. Yeah, <laughs> fuck emotions. Okay, open high more, Badi. Let's go. Yeah, so are we still on the same page? Uh, is atom bomb bad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing's changed. Bomb bad. changed. <laughs> Any bomb, bad. So what are you guys watching first this weekend? Barbie. I'm watching Barbie first. Barbie? Yeah. Yeah. But you're watching Oppenheimer on the same day? Yeah. 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 That's just purely for content purposes. Yeah. There's no That's other reason. That's why it's so inconvenient. And also because we live in a city where there's not much to do. <laughs> We decided to do everything on the same day. <laughs> yeah. So I want to talk about this narrative that's been going around on Twitter. So basically on like... Twitter. Yeah. Because we're still on Twitter, not threads. And so basically like pre-booking has been happening for these two shows. Mm. And the figures have come out saying that Oppenheimer's almost sold 10 times the amount of tickets that Barbie has for the weekend in India, to clarify. And people in Twitter started spinning that as like they had the opinion that it was due to Indian men in particular not being able to accept a female centric movie. And they also had another opinion that uh, Indian men in general just like Christopher Nolan's movies because it makes it's them look like, smart. Yeah. I, 
I mean, I think the statistic is, is not wrong at all. Um, because even, and it's not like I've done a study on this or not. And this is purely my opinion from what I've seen and I've read that even like, if you consider the, uh, you know, the Hindi film industry, uh, Till, until recently, there were never any female-led movies because they would not sell tickets, right? The change has only come about recently and it's still not like something drastic. that... Drastic. Yeah, it's still not a drastic change. It's like gradually reaching a stage where a woman-centric movie will do well and people won't question it even like prior to production, right? Um, so I, I think that statistic is probably right. Like I can see a lot of Indian men not wanting to watch a movie like Barbie. And like, it's, it's, it's a society, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a construct, it's a gender construct. It's like, it's, it's patriarchy at the end of the day. But right? do you like, think it's, it's because of the fact that one is, you know, male centric and one is female centric, that there's such a disparity? Of course. That, I mean, okay, you tell me, did you ever grow up playing with a Barbie? No, but I... I mean, no, just like, it's... No, I did. There's nothing wrong. I did. You did, right? Yeah. But did you... No, I haven't. There's nothing wrong if you did also, right? Yeah. But as a it's, norm... It's just a majority. <laughs> yeah, as a like, norm, like... Boys were not given Barbies as a toy to play with growing up. Or it's up. like a normal... Or, like that stigma where, oh, you have a boy, so you get like... Yeah. Boy toy. Like, and also like color, right? Like pink is considered a feminine color. Blue is considered a masculine color. Barbie's quintessential like symbol is pink. So it's... I like I think this makes a lot of sense that men in India would want to watch a Christopher Nolan movie over Barbie because that is how they're conditioned. I feel like they just wouldn't be comfortable enough yeah. in their own skin to watch. Even if they want to do Even if they, they I mean would. secretly I'm sure they want yeah. to but they're just yeah. like nah. No I think it's, that like one another like I think one of the factors is that Barbie simply isn't as big in India as it is in the West. Like Barbie when it was brought to India that's also there was a, years, like yeah. they they struggled to get like, a hold yeah, in the Indian had, market yeah, exactly. yeah they struggled for many years and they had to like ponder to pander to the Indian market to get a hold of the market and in general like okay in the west Barbie is projected to do much better but that's because it's such a phenomenon there and not just like girls guys everyone Barbie is like a it's gargantuan right and in India it's simply not as big so I think that plays an important so role. You're also, attributing it to lack of knowledge about Barbie. Uh, yeah, it's I, just not. It's I not like an MCU knowledge. movie. Like it's not like a blockbuster. Like no one. It's, I don't think it's, it's not knowledge as big also. Here. Like the brand itself is bigger in the West because Barbie collaborates with everything and every like not just other brands. No, that's what like the yeah. awareness in India about Barbie is exactly, lacking. Is exactly. What you're saying, well, yeah. Oppenheimer is most selective. Just Japan. <laughs> In collaboration terms. Oh, that's another thing. Like, in general, I don't think it's an Indian men thing. <laughs> what, the the fact that they would rather watch Oppenheimer than Barbie? Yeah, cause I don't think it's just an Indian men thing because it's known to have, like, this is like a fact where if you watch Christopher Nolan movie, you're a movie person. Like, you know everything about movies. I think it's like a status symbol for people who watch movies because I used to think like that. Right? Yeah, but think- he's, all, he's also, like, very mainstream now. I think he's probably the biggest Hollywood director. He, in didn't he do Inception? Pop- yeah. yeah. No, he's done... Crazy movies. So like I really did it. Movies. I mean, when I've Inception came Inception out in 2010, uh, I, had, I had no idea what the fuck was going on. I in the just movie. understood <laughs> so the I end. I Wikipedia every single moment so that, like, yeah, because when somebody asked me, would I had no idea. Like, was the <laughs> YouTube Inception explained <laughs> all the theories. Because yeah. I remember the last scene happened in the entire theater. Theater just went. Oh, and I also went, yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. I've not seen No, Inception is great. Right? Like, I really enjoyed it when I watched it. Like, and I'm a huge fan of Nolan, even though, like, yeah, people like, are going to say. Yeah, I used to love Dark Knight and Prestige. Yeah, and I mean, it's just, in- Inception, it change the Memento. fact that he's a great movie maker, but he's, I wouldn't say he's the best. Like, I mean, there's a reason I mean, he's so popular. You only know he's really good if he could direct Barbie. <laughs> no, that like, would be his true testimony. But I don't think so Barbie popular. would be Barbie if he directed it. <laughs> and I don't necessarily uh, like. I think the whole idea. You're basically, of, you're the Indian man. Yeah, the idea of hating something just because it's popular it doesn't make sense to me. If it's popular, there is a good reason that it is popular. Other than Hitler, there was no good reason that he was popular. <laughs> but I feel like also but, <laughs> it's a bold move. <laughs> but I also feel like sometimes, like if something is offbeat, and which it's not something that you would commonly understand easily. I feel like people just consider it to be a really good movie and they'd be like, yeah, okay. Like, yeah, I mean, 
it's great because Christopher Nolan has made it. Yeah. It may not yeah, be the best that's movie. That's what I'm saying. It's become like a status thing yeah. to say, oh, I've, I've seen two Christopher Nolan like, movies. Like, yeah, his movies tend to be confusing. So yeah. people think... So people just so assume people it's like a good Sharon. movie. Yeah, like... Yeah, like <laughs> watch it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Explain. <laughs> like, I still didn't completely understand Tenet. Like, I yeah, was Tenet like, oh, was not that good. Wait, was he like the one who did Interstellar? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Interstellar, Interstellar again. Interstellar is great. I liked, I liked Interstellar, but I mean, I don't know, like... Memento is my favorite Nolan movie. I Memento and I the like Prestige. Prestige also, yeah. I, I, Prestige I really liked, yeah. I didn't even know it was him to... My, my host Titanic. That's, that's great. No, 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 no. Is that? That's cool. <laughs> okay. But anyway, I think like there is a I reason... I know it's not his movie. <laughs> like there is a reason there's a huge disparity. But I, uh, I, the narrative I was just seeing on Twitter was... Indian man can't... I mean, which is also true. Which is definitely... But I feel like it's because that construct has been coming from generations, right? It's hard to break that like in an instant, right? It's like you need to change the conditioning over time. Like maybe your generation will now not think of it as, okay... Um, it's I mean, a female now, and a male thing. Yeah, I'm going for Barbie. Yeah. It's not considered like problematic or anything. Yeah, but I, still, but I that, still don't think yeah, it's yeah. that clear. Yeah, I feel like yeah. it's slowly changing, but... I like one generation above you and me maybe Sharan's generation <laughs> and guys generation huh? Sharan's generation is coming the third yeah. club <laughs> but yeah I, I think it's a generational thing which needs to over time change but it could also possibly be because of lack of awareness about Barbie as you said but I can also see how it is yeah I think it's a mentality. multitude of factors I th- but just labeling it as one was yeah, very, it's, yeah. All, it's which, never a simple black and white thing right it's always multiple things that add to something yeah so. the Twitter thing is true but also, I wouldn't say that's the would, only would there reason. be a study which states that men go to theatres more often than women I'm sure yeah in India for sure yeah, I mean so it's just how but again there are different things that add to that for example even on YouTube like it's male dominated in viewers itself Compared to like females, females because, I think I mean, women see, just don't want to watch us. I don't no, not just us. It's, it's like a common knowledge. It's not. No, it's also because <laughs> it's you need to. See, okay, now the only you're people on YouTube. YouTube, right? If you're consuming YouTube, you need to have a device to be able to consume YouTube. You need to have connection. Historically, again, if you look at the um, the the way our country was, women just didn't have access to these things, right? It's again only slowly changing. Even now, it's not you're, a stage where like all financial, financial, yeah, oh, okay. a financial freedom. Even otherwise, just if you go, we are all living in cities that are so advanced. I mean, not so advanced; they're advanced at least in some certain manner. But the more you go towards the grassroot grassroot level, reality is very different, right? So, I mean that. It's just like how our country was. Things are changing, but it can't be an overnight change. Do you look look up to Christopher Nolan? What do you mean? Do you like? Do you think he's? I'm not. I'm not one of those dudes. I just like the <laughs> movies he make. I would never no, want to be. Shy to admit that you like him. He has a receding hairline. I would. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be him. Okay, who do you like? Ryan like, Gosling. Tell me. No, tell me. Guys, some, watch no, Barbie. Movie, movie maker. Okay, you like? Is Ryan Gosling your ultimate like? In the um, film industry, Ryan Gosling is the guy. No, he's my no. Tell guy. me the guy. The guy. The guy. The guy. Yeah. Messi. He can't even speak English. <laughs> Who's that? Messi. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, no. Messi. I was like, wait, you talking okay, about Ryan Gosling? You said Messi. What, you, what, you, what about no, you? No, I did say Messi. <laughs> okay. Say. I would never want to be Messi. He's 5'7". You no, can't be Messi. I'm not asking you. You will never be. Who is like the guy? No, who you want to meet? Like, who do you look up to? Like, oh. If you could have person. dinner with one person, who would it be? Yeah, 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 exactly. Ryan Gosling. Fuck, dinner with Messi is going to slap. <laughs> No, sign no. language up in there. Movie industry. No, no, not just movie. Any industry. Any, any industry. <laughs> yeah, me and Messi out there like... Okay. <laughs> okay, Messi, what about you? Oh, shit. This is a tough question. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I feel like I'm going to give a very stupid answer. Okay, in like five seconds. <laughs> Do you have an answer yet? Uh, Timothy no, Chalamet. I'm, okay, Timothy Chalamet. The fuck? What are you going to try and fuck him? Uh, yeah. Yeah, same. Ah... <laughs> uh, Oh shit, I forgot about the possibility of having dinner and... Every, <laughs> anything, and messy. <laughs> anything shuffling, anything goes. Anything, say anything. Hrithik Roshan. Yeah, I okay, know. Hrithik Roshan. So my question to you guys but is... Emma Watson actually, okay. Emma Watson. So huh. my question to you is, these are the people you would ultimately love to meet, right? Like yeah. the ultimate. Can I give a smart answer? answer? No, it's not the ultimate, but you gave Can me I five give seconds a smart to answer? think. Okay. Just say the name, man. Just say any name. Fuck, I don't have a smart answer. I okay. have to think. Okay, so okay. Would you... Shah Rukh Khan, Shah Rukh Khan, sorry. Okay, okay, Shah Rukh Khan. Okay, so would you go for dinner with them? Mm. Somebody's offered you $30 million mm. and said you either take $30 million but you can't go for dinner with them mm. 
or you get to go for dinner with them but you don't get to 30 have, million dollars money yeah 30 million dollars is it like I'll that question i'll take the money a million dollars i'll hire or, shahrukh khan with yeah. 30 million dollars i'll take the money and fuck them with shahrukh a million no. dollars or dinner with jay z yeah. yeah, jay z can same. teach you so much in that one dinner the information you'll get is price bro shut the fuck what up what are you with jay z and he gives you work which Man, is more jay z is going to talk about cheating on beyonce yeah <laughs> 30 million dollars 100% unless you're talking about bringing someone back from the dead and then versus that and then okay, okay who are you going to bring back from the dead my nalu oh. <laughs> <laughs> my little baby girl <laughs> there's no coming back from this <laughs> fuck is it time for break <laughs> god <laughs> No, but yeah, oh, I no, mean, Sharon, what's your answer? Who's the person? We and already would you know. Choose we already fucking then? know. It's either Shahrukh Khan and Cristiano Ronaldo, or both <laughs> merged yeah, together. Yeah. No, it's Cristiano. It's Cristiano. Yeah, it's Cristiano. Yeah. Yeah. But will you take thirty million or Cristiano? I'd meet Cristiano. Shut what? Shut, yeah. shut, shut, shut the fuck up, dog. Shut the fuck up. Oh that is a lie. I, I will tell you what Ronaldo will say. Yeah, me personally, I'm the best player in the last 20 years. Uh, hard work, mentality. Imagine being friends with the guy. You're I not will friends with him. First of all, dinner does not equate to yeah. friends. He yeah, may not like you after that one no, dinner. No, but he knows that I've left 30 million on the table and I'm meeting him. He's like, okay, <laughs> but, this but, motherfucker is crazy. Yeah, exactly. Okay, this, cr- this motherfucker is crazy. I get the crazy. mentality, but no. <laughs> yeah, this motherfucker is crazy. I need to be friends with him. No, I need maybe, to know what he thinks. No, Bro, maybe he's, he's like, just, this motherfucker is crazy. I don't want him <laughs> around me. What I'm yeah. going to do. I'll take the odds. Clone me. I will take the odds. I'll take the odds. But what will you do <laughs> being friends with him? No, what will you do at dinner? It's not like he's hanging out. His discipline, it's not like you're hanging out every day watching movies. It's just more than like, sis. <laughs> imagine imagine we become friends i would he just got his pad his own back for 2 hours talk about I how he conquered i'm padding his back as well <laughs> <laughs> it's team work here guys i don't know i feel like we will take the mil, 30 mil no 30 million you dollars can i can hire make. him 30 million dollars you, you can I, make I, yeah. i'll take the 30 million i mean you can so make i can make the 30 million i can make that money just so that the editors do i'll real. take the 30 million i'll name my vibrator timothy <laughs> I'm good. Expensive as vibrator. <laughs> okay, fine, guys. Keep your money, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> But I actually want to talk about what you were saying earlier before this question came up uh, about YouTube having more male audience. Mm. Um, are there more? I mean, I'm assuming there are more male creators also on YouTube. I don't know about that, but I just know that it's a it's a known thing that. there are more males watching stuff on youtube than females hmm. so do you think that leaves the door open for female creators like yeah, do you think it's easier for female creators <laughs> what yeah, is what the question say? yeah answer it bro so yes no, no question there are there's obviously more chance for female creators to come in like supply and demand wise yeah yeah but like you want to elaborate on that elaborate so <laughs> there, there is space for more female creators to come and create okay uh, but do you think it's easier for female creators as to male creators but to, like grow depends. and i mean growth wise okay as as creators both of you what do you think like you can give your pov but and if you if we strictly talk about youtube i don't think no I'm, okay social media in general like your journey to on to be Instagram, a content creator or an influencer to be a influencer slash content creator it is 100% easier if you are an attractive human being as a female i do agree yeah like it is easier for a attractive i mean if you are an attractive female men are just better. thirsty i guess like i mean yes. yeah that's not the females <laughs> fault it's yeah men are thirsty yeah men are just thirsty no i mean yeah. if i can monetize that by not yeah right? like for example <laughs> i get i get told all the time that all your content revolves around sex but guys you're watching it so if you guys stop watching s- stuff related to sex then i'll make something about like yeah, education yeah because i and so, we've discussed this and <laughs> sex education <laughs> yeah or sex education <laughs> no and i mean we've discussed this about like I, you know initially as you keep asking why is it like all sex right and sex related and you're like that's what sells yeah that's what sells so yeah. i mean in any brand that's what yeah. that's what sells and it's not like we don't want to do content other than that but sometimes you just also need to think about what's working for you and what's not right so do you but, ever feel guilty when you use sex as a tool no not at all i mean it's no, not like it's, 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 all, it's all, all, always organic i think in social media you got to use whatever you have like i don't think i'm but in audience our- hairy chest <laughs> <laughs> yeah literally whatever you have like i use my family and friends because i don't have any other talent so i'm very good at using my family and friends fuck please but, clip but, this and save it but for example like when i say that you know attractive people have an advantage over others Uh, attractive people have an advantage over others it's only when you are in the growing stage 
like maybe you'll get to 100k really fast or maybe you'll your reach like you're will saying blow up. you grow you reach a pit stop and then it's yeah no like, no no i'm just saying that your reels will blow up you will do well your youtube videos will do well are but are you trying to say guy when i'm not as attractive as you No, the what? No, no one is what? following Sharam because he's attractive. Yeah, nobody is <laughs> following him because his friends no, are attractive. No, because we've not crossed him on Instagram yet. <laughs> we, you heard? They heard it <laughs> two times. <laughs> no, what I'm trying to say is, in the long run, I don't think attractive. Yeah, it'll like helps. stabilize at some stabilize. point. Stabilize, yeah. like people get sick day, of you. Like they'll get tired Shut of your the face. Fuck it, I'm the ending this topic. <laughs> <laughs> But do you actually think that there will come a point where attractive people might not? Like I sell think, less much. No, I feel like no. Attractive people point. always sell, but I, like I, especially right now in the present scenario, there are everywhere you see the your you see content creators. Yeah. They'll put up one fucking video and then they'll blow up on reels and then they think they're content creators. And you yeah. are definitely content creator. Yeah, it's saturated. But you are not you. Content creation is not like a twenty twenty cricket game. It is like test cricket. It's you like for me. years and years and years. No, it's like a long term. Last day on the cricket yeah, and a long term. It's a long term thing. Yeah. So. You can blow up once. You can blow up twice, and then it it goes down to how much work you're putting yeah. and how much you love so creating videos. It doesn't depend on virality. Basically. Yeah, because like after some some time, like you you are eighteen now and you're super good looking and girls are thirsting over you. At twenty five, there will be another eighteen year old who they are thirsting over and. You won't you will, be relevant. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. won't be relevant unless you have you're bringing something else like to some the substance, table. Basically. Yeah, no, like yeah. see, I, I like I know this because this has come on my feed. Like there are videos where I've seen people just. Like sort of vibing to music, and that has some twenty million. Yeah, views. like barely moving. In, yeah, just yeah. vibing to music, but they they're like pleasing to the eye, right? Yeah. But how much of that kind of co- content will you consume, right? Like you may like that video once, you may follow the person, but then after a point, if that person's not giving you either entertainment or information or something that is of tangible value to you, I think that person will only have so much of a shelf life. Got it. Okay, guys, we'll be right back because uh, our batteries are going to die. So <laughs> don't, don't say that. That's lame. <laughs> Why? Our battery. It's the truth. <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome back to the podcast. So, speaking about falling off as from being a content creator, so do you guys plan on doing this? <laughs> What was that question? Speaking of falling off, do you guys plan on doing this? No, no. Hopefully, you don't. Planning I mean, so what's more. your long-term plan when it comes to content creation? Do you see this as something sustainable for the next decade? Let's say. I, I feel like. Ah, oh, sorry. Go. I I just feel like it. Like as a content creator, you can't only have one thing working for you, right? You need to sort of invest Side, in multiple yeah. other products. Right. Businesses. The product could be yourself, but. It could be. It has to be. You have to like. That's why we're doing the podcast, right? It's one more avenue for us to earn from. Hey, hey! This is not for money. We're just talking to friends. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, um, he's so not taking any money out of this. He's not taking any money out of this. We have established this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like literally bitumen is <laughs> back. But anyway, um, so you need to diversify what you're doing. It can't just be uploading. I, this is my right. personal opinion uh, because I'm a big believer in diversification um that you need to have multiple things going for you because you never know right like like for instance one day twitter was there i mean not twitter or threads, what was that app tiktok oh. one yeah, day right. tiktok was there the other day it's banned in the country right so you never know what's happening like cuz there's so much that um sort of has an impact on these platforms that You can't just bank on it. You need to have multiple different avenues. But I feel like most creators won't be able to like diversify also, because like for example, wines were a thing, right? Mm. And wines died really fast. So you don't need to diversify just in the content creation no, space, no, right? I'm, I'm saying like, yeah. like as a separate thing. Most creators, I feel like you can see from their content also they struggle to kind of morph into their environment. No. So what I meant was okay. No, I I got what you meant. Yeah, I'm like saying, maybe. Your money can always make you money, also, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. You at some point you can become an investor. You can like a lot of content creators have now also ventured into opening and running talent management companies because it's still related to the field. You have knowledge no, no. and yeah. Of course, like I understood what you're saying, yeah. but I'm saying most like the other half of creators, small or big, they kind of fall off, like what he said. Like not everyone because, has that ability. Yeah, to like most wine and, stars are. Consider right. cringe now because they didn't know how to kind of, yeah. you know, maneuver into yeah. other streams. Or yeah. Whatever. No, like and YouTube. I think that's as for for any industry, right? At yeah. the end of the day, not every company that's been 
um, incorporated has sustained, right? Like people do also pack up and you know try to put their hands in other things also at the end of the day. But yeah. So right now you're. I'm assuming all of your main sources of incomes are from brand deals and sponsorships, right? Mm-hmm. Minus. I mean, yeah, I do like a little. When it bit comes of, to content creation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Huh? Daddy's money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's stick to the <laughs> accusations. <laughs> so, how's that whole experience like in general? Daddy's money sure is great. No, a lot of people will be Spending curious. Daddy's money is great. <laughs> Not you, Sharon. The people that earn their money through hard work. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of the audience will yeah, be curious. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm about, a hardworking daughter. <laughs> about how that whole process goes. So, just to give them an idea of how it goes in the industry. Yeah, start. I mean it's simple have a following if you have a following you can monetize the following through brands if it's on Instagram or any other short video platform and if it's on YouTube YouTube will pay you money uh, for AdSense and brands can also uh, integrate their product into your videos and you can make money so it's like a twofold thing uh, that's mainly how most uh, that's the two main uh, sources yeah. and then there are creators who have merch there are creators who uh, affiliate, marketing. affiliate marketing affiliate marketing yeah consultation so, yes yeah so and so forth yeah like gayu's possible um, avenue could also be modeling right like which she does on her page also but i'm sure you do it for brands when they ask yeah, you to, if, uh, yeah you know like use their product most things that i can do i will monetize yeah, it yeah. that's how i make my yeah. money so but okay in theory like it sounds easy a brand pays you to promote their product but i'm assuming it's a lot deeper than that of and course, things aren't as straightforward right yeah. so how has your experience been in general dealing with brand promotions or like let's look at the negative side have you guys had trouble dealing with particular brands anything that i'm not asking you to name brands but any experiences that stick out any hardships that you faced i feel like every day it's like like an every day trouble <laughs> um because i feel like and this is i mean i don't even have as much experience as these two but in whatever little experience i have i feel like brands are still not in the space where they trust the creator with their concepts with their ideas and their knowledge of how their page works so they always will try to push a certain agenda from their end which clearly may or may not work right for yeah that, like like yeah. you said cuz most brands like the people who call the shots are much like of an older demo- demographic so they'll have a certain idea of how to push the product yeah, it's which more won't work like it might have worked like 10 years ago yeah it won't work with the audience we have now and yeah. how people consume is very different cuz consumers are much smarter than how they were before right like i feel like you can still clearly tell when it's a video that is organic versus when it's a video that's Yeah a like mm-hmm. people can clearly branded. tell what's an ad what's not yeah, so might it, as well play into yeah, it like it that. looks like a traditional ad at the end of the day um but that change is coming like there are newer you know agencies that are aware of the fact that the creator will know best about what will work on their page how best to integrate yeah, like, um the brand organically um uh, and organic content content will always do better than branded content right out and out branded content um but what do you think uh yeah i mean i agree with you guys uh, but it also depends on how big a creator you are i feel like when you reach or surpass a certain number then i think bigger brands start trusting you and they just like it's easier yes it's more like a you have yeah. numbers yeah you have numbers so I, like if you see netflix work work with a certain creator you know that they don't really like the content that this creator makes but the amount of distribution that this creator has they like we just want that distribution we just want people to know about our brand so we're just going to market it with this guy right so on that guy's page a specific thing works so then they just have to say yes to it so when you become a creator as big as that then even the brands end up deciding that okay you guys can do whatever you want we'll just give you the money yeah cuz even now if you don't have 100 plus like 100k plus followers or so and so you're not still considered a big creator fuck just 97000 so. away guys <laughs> i feel like if you become a public profile you'll be much much closer yeah, in to a that day. number i mean uh, it's a, it's also not about numbers it's about like reach it's uh, yeah reach and the influence that you have for example iron has like 50000 followers but like but i they're think tight. they're extremely tight yeah so they are like him. yeah so the com- com- plus, plus he replies to like every single one of them so especially if you're a girl with a iron is customer friendly cup size oh see but the cup size less than see 
Cup size no bar. So the it does it doesn't matter like as a creator 50k his 50k is more useful than some artist which has like 600k absolutely yeah. because he, they diligently wait and watch what he does which is and way more important what he does, yeah so. they believe what he does so i think that is more important like you can have like 5 million followers but if they don't if you say hey i'm at a park uh, can 10 of you come and if 10 of them don't come then you're just yeah. wasting your quality time of, yeah. yeah it's the quality of followers as well so yeah. but i also don't think brands are out and out stupid right like they i feel like it's easy to say that the brand doesn't know what they're doing and all of that but i feel like for them also like often times i've seen we get so frustrated with like brands when they don't listen to what the creator wants but they also have people to report to they also need to show not just reach but also conversion at times so for them also it's like okay this is a safer option right so the possibility for instance if you reach out to a million um, you know a million follower influencer and to get 100 conversions will be higher just math wise then if you reach out to someone with a 50000k followers right so not 50000k 50000 follower uh, influencer so i think it's like it's easier to say that the brand doesn't know what they're doing but it's they have their reasons they have right. their reasons you talked you talked about working with netflix briefly and i just want to touch on that so when you work with like these big companies like the huge companies you would assume that the process is a lot more easier less resistance but is that always the case do you prefer working with the bigger brands rather than the smaller ones have you noticed uh, uh, fortunately i have only worked with like really big brands like i've never worked with a single brand in fuck this guy man <laughs> shade has been thrown <laughs> like netflix was the first ever brand deal i think i did and pizza was come about like do you want to talk about that story So yeah, so our dear friend Akash <laughs> who finds this uh, podcast, <laughs> finds this podcast terrible. Akash, fuck you. <laughs> so he uh, really he watched my like he I I don't know he found my Instagram one day and then he saw all my videos with Amma and then he really liked it and he said, hey man, uh, I already knew him because he was cash on delivery on Instagram and everybody knows cash on delivery because of those videos, the Bus short feed. videos, Buzzfeed Bus and feed. even those short Malayalam videos he made. Mm. So uh when he reached out and he said I want you to do something with your grandma for Netflix I was like this sounds too good to be true <laughs> so it's then, a prank <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then he just flew us out to uh, like it was so me and Amma used to shoot like this like on a phone and then from there it suddenly full was on like production. yeah full on like 40 people uh, was it all, overwhelming kind of amma yeah. loved it huh amma loved it because <laughs> amma was just chilling there she was, she could do whatever the fuck she wanted yeah. uh and that's how it started so it was basically his idea that oh let's take an indian grandmom and an indian grandchild and make them review tv shows which are on our platform but that was the turning point in your career you would say yeah yeah 100% i want to come back to what akash has done recently like in terms of cycling like across the state and reaching yeah, that's goa quite that's quite insane insane <laughs> like would you would you guys like, like, like do that akash only has like if you see his stories there are only two things either he's eating ice cream or he's cycling <laughs> across the country there is no in between <laughs> but i i would totally like do that i don't know if i physically can but yeah. the like, the idea, idea that adventure idea getting on a cycle and cycling yeah i would love to do it like <laughs> no, idea wise i like most things <laughs> i like no, the idea I'm, of skydiving <laughs> no like I, i like these like adventurous yeah, activities yeah. so i would really want to do it i don't that's what i'm saying i'm not sure if i can physically do it but i feel like we don't do such adventurous things in our group what's wrong Recent with french toast I would <laughs> seven days a week <laughs> wow try this new sandwich <laughs> but okay um, so netflix was the turning point in his career what do you think was the turning point in yours like which brand deal do you think was I can't believe I got this brand deal. I mean, see, so far whatever I've gotten, I still can't believe I got to that point. But there must that, have been that one moment, like for instance, Vogue. Was it Vogue? It could have been like Skims. That was a big one. Skims. That was that was huge. huge. But, okay, yeah. but if you had to pick one, which, 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 as she GQ, said, GQ, because I always wanted to be on like a magazine mm. thing. I mean, Vogue and uh, Skims still like it's great. Yeah. But I still want to be like on a magazine, right? On a billboard, like that kind of thing. Not billboard. That, that, <laughs> not that one. It's it's, it's been it's been on national Be news what now. You wish <laughs> not that billboard. One billboard. Call us. Something that doesn't talk about my age <laughs> and has a better photo. 
and better edit are it <laughs> <laughs> so basically um gayu turned a certain age <laughs> and uh, sharan is turning a certain age so the he wanted to <laughs> the I same turned. age so he wanted to um surprise gayu with a birthday gift and he got this billboard made in possibly the busiest street of kochi where the most number <coughs> of eyeballs would fall and he got a not so nice picture of gayu <laughs> put up on that picture. <laughs> we all thought it was a great picture till she reacted I to it i was thinking as we speak <laughs> <laughs> yeah so arin was the brain child behind the edit and i'm assuming the text also on the billboard no you're yeah, assuming idea right the, the idea of the billboard we'll link the video to the <coughs> billboard in the description so you can have a look at that video but i think it was we, we don't <laughs> have to take a look at that video <laughs> i don't know i okay from a personal perspective and this is just me how i am like as a person like obviously you have your own right to react a certain way i would have loved it uh, but maybe if it actually happens to me i may not like it but <laughs> i thought it was really like cute and funny uh, but i can see how you were uh, also put off by it <laughs> and it made national news there was an article yeah. that came out there was an article in hindustan times which came out yeah. i think today or yesterday so i'm advertising <laughs> yourself in your own content now <laughs> which is really funny you know we can segue into another topic we're talking about more interest we're talking about my turning points <laughs> not my age sharan nayar's video was a turning <laughs> point was. but no, but yeah the same thing yeah 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 so um i feel like remember when um i feel like this is what helped me grow like this a group group <laughs> the um, so during pandemic remember self portraits bec- yeah, became yeah, like yeah. a thing yeah. like with content creators and people in general yeah. so that was like a great space for me to ex- because i was still very conscious of i'm still very conscious of the camera mm-hmm. so like that gave a lot of practice for me to just be at home and like create my own shit yeah. and like that is what helped me a yeah. lot I, Then, i remember you had done some 30 day outfit challenge not yeah, a challenge like, but it was like you something should, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. testing yourself Things with like right that. like to be systematic and disciplined to think yeah. out of the box maybe not out of the box every day so i remember that's when it truly really, like your follower count had like risen quite a bit yeah for sure and also like being in sharan's videos also helped me because yeah. i like if it's photos i can do like whatever like, yeah. i have no problem with my confidence yeah. and stuff but with videos i still like kind yeah. of like get very um statues come yeah. out like i i wouldn't know what to say how to move yeah so uh, that way being in sharan's videos like really helped yeah. me cuz like that helped me like shake off yeah. all the conscious like no i agree had, like I, that was going to be my answer if anyone wanted to ask me guy guy you just <laughs> guy, guy you just said she's grateful for the pandemic <laughs> I mean see it's an insensitive thing to no, say I'm but it's actually <laughs> true I was like my life was like at a stop till the pandemic and the, the day the pandemic no, happened and everybody went the day you met me no no, no. no. <laughs> i mean i don't mean to get deep here cuz the only time i met like when i like started hang out with sharan the only time somebody related to my mentality at the time was you cuz i felt like people around me like growing up like uh i had a like i didn't have the best like school life and stuff like that so growing up i feel like people around me my friends people i know don't know like they always had like they knew what to do so it felt like i was always catching up to like i didn't have any like aim. ambition aim yeah. nothing so when the whole world came to a stop it felt like the world caught up to where i was yeah so like that like I, during the pandemic we spoke about yeah, that also, right? yeah the first morning i woke up and i realized nobody's doing anything i was like <laughs> fuck yeah cuz i was like this is the day in the life so you know and you know the funniest thing a week before the full lockdown was uh, announced sharan was in bombay he had moved to bombay okay um and we met and he's like uh, in covid like the news had just started to come out and he's like so i'm going back to kochi and i'm like what are you saying you've just moved stay back here don't be such a um loser why are you going back blah 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 cut to two weeks after the uh, lockdown i'm like shan can you drive up to bombay and get me to cochin please <laughs> did you do it no no okay. obviously not I, i was in bombay i was in bombay for the first lockdown entirely cuz it Call genuinely it felt like the world yeah, caught yeah, up to like yeah yeah but but like i like to answer your question about like what is that one thing which turned your career around or like what was the turning point more than in working with any brand i think uh like what we have now with the number of people who are friends who work together it's i think the chance is one in a billion mm-hmm. uh so just to create that atmosphere 
and to create that many number of people who are friends with each other who are kind of in the same line uh i think that is the turning point like i think we are way too lucky like and we don't like you creating your community and like, like no no how... not just community it's like me becoming friends with you me uh, yeah that's me, what i meant yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, i meant yeah 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 never in my entire life would i have even had the not even like the the strength to think about me as a content creator like if you look at my instagram from before 2020 roaming in rome roaming in rome like literally <laughs> it was just scenery it was just my travels what is that i don't wine, know what that wine. is oh, okay. <laughs> i was like what is like, boomerang it's a boomerang <laughs> oh yeah i didn't even know but yeah it's basically like food it's it's scenery but barely a picture of myself cut to 2020 and you can see how different i am in the initial videos that charan has put up versus me now um i know some people prefer the initial me but anyway like who, i would wait who are these people yeah. like followers or not followers whoever oh. trolls i guess but anyway it doesn't matter i mean but the fact that this has happened like so many of my friends from like way before are just like I can't <laughs> believe you do this. Like yeah, yeah, and yeah. I also can't believe like I do this. And like speaking about how the pandemic has impacted everyone differently like even for me like just the other day I was thinking about it like if the pandemic hadn't happened I would still be in my full-time law job. I would not be spending time <coughs> the amount of time I can with my parents at home. So it's had so m- and I don't know why again I'm going back to the first topic we discussed today but just having that time with your family at home is so valuable because the older you grow the lesser time you spend with your parents right but I feel like the pandemic really like sort of leveled it out at some point but yeah speaking about career yeah <laughs> and social media <laughs> yeah but I also like uh, in terms of uh in that career it's like I'm just thinking about like odds right odds of like each one of you thinking hey do you think i'll make it in life do you think i'll become big or what if my friends become big and i don't end up doing as well but in my in my head i always have a flip side thought process which is like what are the like you all all of us will make it because what is the what are the odds like i have one younger brother <laughs> who edits shoots uh, does whatever the fuck like he's good at everything I have one friend from Moscow who is also an editor who's really funny in videos which is Balu by the way and like finding each one of you like finding Gayu at the time she found like maybe if I found like if I met Gayu 10 years later maybe she would have been a way bigger creator maybe you know we wouldn't be able to be friends the way we are now or Shamali if the pandemic didn't happen at that point of time and she didn't come back uh like it wouldn't be the same with fahim i just ignore it because <laughs> it's not important <laughs> or like fahim like i met fahim at choice school for a tedx event fahim was there to uh to hit on girls <laughs> or for girls to hit on him okay he was there for a specific reason goes both ways i was there because for the first time in my life i'm going back to my school this is right after the netflix thing came out so i was like you know what <laughs> finally if i go back to my school i'll get some attention and i i remember like people are like oh my god charan that's the guy in the netflix videos so we were both there for different reasons although there was a tedx happening at the same both time both there for ego boost <laughs> yeah. both there for attention yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah and then I I met the guy and he's like bro a big fan of yours and I'm like what a lame fuck uh, <laughs> Yeah so I could have pretended like I didn't watch his videos Yeah but that, that but was I, that was so refreshing because usually what when people see people on social media they will watch you they will consume you they will do everything and then when they meet you they will pretend oh, like they don't know Oh my girlfriend like Yeah yeah <laughs> but and now yeah. you're literally his videos you're, you are his videos yeah. Yeah, This guy is like you know what fuck you I love you <laughs> Better be hanging out next time like, who the fuck is this Yeah I, I want to be the next kid the next character i saw yeah. potential in myself but you know honestly <laughs> honestly among everyone you are my favorite character on the vlog i know mine do <laughs> yeah so and like so I, i don't know if you guys watch the vlog it's very like it looks very natural but fahim is a thought process he will text me one day hey bro i think we should do this <laughs> <laughs> or like recently when i was when he was really sick and we went to his house he, uninvited uh the fan was on like this is those moments where oh. you're like fuck like every time i'm mad at fahim which is quite often <laughs> i think of this moment i'm like you know what there's no point to be, there's no Come reason here, to be mad you. yeah yeah you didn't say what the fan yeah so 
we are entering his room and he has the fan on so the ac is not on and it's very dark so as we are entering i can hear the fan go taka 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 the fans making a weird noise so I, he knows i am entering like he knows because i rang the bell and everything so i am entering and the moment i enter suddenly the fan goes off and the ac comes on and i know why he did that because like audio. he wants to protect the audio and i didn't have to tell him like this is, like i didn't have to say hey fine can you see? like it automatically he thought it when he was really sick i was in like the worst <laughs> pain of my life i had pancreatitis i was I, part of me just didn't want to talk to sharan and him say <laughs> oh turn the fan off but i knew we had a problem with the audio. it was almost like a reflex to yeah, be honest yeah. you both are still a better love story than twilight <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> turned off the ac turned on the fan just so that when you come in he turns off the fan <laughs> <laughs> He was really trying to impress her and then <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. just the just the odds of that happening and like uh, like the question you asked, right? Do you see this do you see uh, yourself doing this in the long term? One of the things I keep talking about this is creators find it very tough to uh, uphold what they do, like continue it for a long term basis because it is very taxing on you. Yeah, because the relevancy also yeah, switches, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But here we are so lucky because we have so many people doing so many different things who work as a team that if one day if i don't want to do something somebody will be like you know what hey shalan let's do this yeah. and if that other person is going through a low time then i'll say hey man let's do this so it's because i feel like as 10 people we are stronger than as individual creators and that's the one thing which which what goes is, for us yeah. which not But many people have the pack is stronger together yeah yeah the But, pack is stronger uh, together you see yourself doing youtube like We I yeah, yeah I'll, I will yeah till the day I like making videos I'll do But it. But I mean you you've also thought of diversifying. Yeah, I want to diversify yeah. like I want to I want to make money so that uh, I mean you can do crazy really, stuff on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, so, so he can so he can go on dinner with Cristiano Ronaldo <laughs> instead of getting 30 million. Throw three, throw three no, friends off the plane. No, I will go plane. for dinner with Cristiano and give him my suitcase with 30 million dollars. <laughs> Why? <laughs> What is wrong with you? <laughs> This is like a risky <laughs> game. It's not my fault. <laughs> What, I mean, could, you're like bigger than Ambani in this like, stage no, of life. No, I'm just saying it has to reach a point where, like, you know, all these things it could be a fun video. But like, give thirty million dollars to Ronaldo. Not, not clickbait. Two brackets. <laughs> Imagine Mr. Beast does this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Few, yeah. He's gonna steal your idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. No, but I was. Um, I still okay. So you guys, I mean, other than what you said about what was the turning point in your career. brand wise it's netflix for you it's gq for you but do you have a dream brand you want to work with like mm, nike is one but <laughs> that door's closed <laughs> <laughs> no that was not like red bull is one of the what do you mean oh red bull yeah red bull is one but of the but you're working with them so yeah, i'm saying yeah. someone you've not worked with and you would love I mean, it could be Cristiano Ronaldo, Cristiano like he's a Ronaldo brand, Museum. but <laughs> one brand, like absolutely one brand. <laughs> Um, have, guys like, you don't know the reach of this podcast you have, might get it i have multiple brands like no, just one yeah, just i mean like, name it all. name yeah. name all of it <laughs> prada louis vuitton okay. throwing it out there yeah, yeah i, mean, I don't have my, i don't have one like nike maybe but like uh, i don't i'm saying that in the sense that i i don't have one brand i dream of working with because i feel like it'll happen yeah yeah, yeah. so it's like i don't really have to nice Okay, so I don't have that confidence. No, so no, 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 no. <laughs> like I have this thing. For example, uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. But for example, when Netflix first did well, I used to on my Instagram bio, I used to have uh, like all the articles which came out with my grandmom, mm. like L and Vogue, and I don't know if there was some of them. And then when the GQ thing, when we got the best dressed GQ thing last year, it was there on my bio for some time. But I feel like if I keep it there for too long. Or if I'm known as a guy who was once, you know, fucking two twenty twenty two GQ bestlist, nobody gives a fuck. Like it's already twenty twenty three. So I I'm glad I was GQ. You don't want to be labeled as not that. just labeled. I don't want to be comfortable. I'm like, oh yeah, nice. I want GQ. You want to constantly be challenged. You don't yeah. want to get complacent. Yeah, basically. yeah. And like, there would have been a lot of people who came on Netflix and who came, had one eye article and they're like, oh fuck yeah, I made it. I I don't think that's made it. I, I felt good about it for like. You want to yeah. buy Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> that's not what I meant. <coughs> so we're constantly pushing the. It's constantly pushing. Yeah. So I, having the GQ thing even on my bio, I feel like it's making me complacent. So I, I like fuck that. Like that's all. You're done, really done, a done. weird person. And you no, know that. And you know it. that. No, you, I understand. Yeah. You know that you didn't deserve it. 
100%. That is so different from like okay so Fahim's not a content creator but when you go to his house you'll see all his trophies just stacked up there. No my mom that's put it. She's proud of me. See but that, that's also because see uh it's a thing which you see I mean I don't know if I'm going to sound really mean but like you know actors yeah, you are. <laughs> actors who don't do that many movies they will put up on the if you check their Instagram 5 years back I did this movie. But 6 I, years back I did the same movie. But I feel movie. like that's that's not a bad No, it's not a bad thing, but I feel like in some sort of way the mentality is that you won at one point of life so you're, you're comfortable. Yeah, holding on to that, yeah, on to that and you're yeah. comfortable. Yeah. If you let go of that maybe you will end up doing more things. Correct. Well, I mean, when it's like a cult classic that an actor's been in, yeah, like it's different, like right? No, it's usually not the the guys who have cult classics will have several hundred, you know, movies which he has done after that. I think like there should Mohan be a balance, has, like you said, you know, like celebrate the wins but don't let it make you complacent and like done yeah, with yeah 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 right? like i don't want to relax saying oh my yeah, god one day i want to constantly this. push yeah. yourself because in 2023 nobody gives a fuck about yeah. what you did in 2022 yeah. so makes sense that's all what was that <laughs> <laughs> unexpressed what is small chemistry that i <laughs> would so small why do you guys keep holding hands off why not Okay then hold it over there. Yeah, you not show then. affection towards your hold friends. Hold it proudly then. Hold then. It. After the podcast man. We hold I'm more than that. I'm extending my hand over here. <laughs> you hands. want to hold now. Also what is what is this uh, outfit choice you had? <laughs> I feel like a Delhi girl who's going to go shop now. <laughs> Joking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Delhi hit. <laughs> Delhi hit. No but I Always was uh, I was shooting a video girl. with Joby a dance video guys watch it next week. <laughs> yes. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna hop on one of those soon. What? I'm one, practicing my dance moves. <laughs> <laughs> hop on one of those. Guys, Joby is right here by the way. Just stick to this. But uh, you know, Fahim is actually a really good dancer. He's just so shy. I have like certain moves, like club moves. I don't moves. think he's shy. He like I've seen him like dance. No, it just depends on his mood. Yeah. yeah. No, he's camera shy. As in, he won't dance on camera. That's the one thing he said. I will not. You ask me to do anything. No, yeah, he is dancing on camera. Yeah, I have, but I decided. It's about catching it in the in. moment of him dancing. Yeah. It's not hey, hey, hey fine. Can you dance? Then he won't dance. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. fine, dancing him, you capture yeah. it. I'm fucking like a wildlife photographer. <laughs> <laughs> he was the line to roar. Catch him on the right time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, did you hear about the whole Gigi Hadid thing? Wait, she I got arrested no, for drug possession. No, did you? What? Oh. She got arrested for drug possession in Mar- Mar- no, marijuana. Where was it? Puerto some Rico? some mm-hmm. island. I, I forgot. Cayman Islands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Marijuana is not a drug. I mean, no, she <laughs> got arrested. <laughs> so it was marijuana and paraphernalia for other drugs or something like that. I I just saw the marijuana mm. part. There was why, also why do you think marijuana is not a drug? Marijuana. <laughs> I mean, I mean compared doctor, to other so. drugs, it's not the same when you think yeah, about. Yeah, compared to murder. Uh, Thievery is not, but it's still wrong. Yeah, thievery. But crime is punishable by different. Yeah. Also, even in terms of drugs, it's just... no. See, marijuana. It has a lot more use when it's used appropriately. It can be used yeah, in used the right sense. Yeah, it's used medicinally. But it's not legal, no. In ca- in this yeah, place where she was caught, it's not legal. So you have to follow the law of the land. I was right? going to talk about marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, in general, I do think uh, legalization of marijuana in general is the right move. Because when you, because I want to. <laughs> no, no. See, when because you, I want to consume. <laughs> when, no, I don't. Personally, I don't. All, all of you know this. Yeah. I don't. I don't But know that, guys. When you, uh, <laughs> when you label marijuana as like an illegal substance, mm. people say like marijuana is a gateway drug. Like if you yeah, smoke marijuana, you'll you're more likely to go on to harder drugs. Mm. But the reason marijuana is commonly a gateway drug is because it's illegal. If it was controlled by the government and like the whole process was monitored. You'd have first it, there'd be safer use. Then it'll become a legally gateway drug. No, how marijuana is commonly a gateway drug is when you when you can only acquire it through illegal means. You'll have like a dealer, right? You'll hit up the dealer. How do you know so much? Man? And then movies, pop culture, fuck's sake, man. <laughs> and then, now that you've crossed that boundary of what is legal, you are more comfortable to cross that line again to go on to the harder drugs, and. Uh, Another additional point is you have a dealer who can offer you these harder drugs, and yeah, you you regularly purchase marijuana from him, and then so, suddenly he offers you like a gram of coke or whatever. If it was legalized, the whole process would be safer. 
you wouldn't have to resort to these shady guys who may not even be giving you the right thing and you're not crossing that line which says that it is illegal so but that's just a hypothesis right? okay so no, then so the government so in, will give you so it alcohol it alcohol is banned would it have been a gateway drug technically to if you had to acquire it through illegal means yeah for sure yeah but so the government gives you marijuana and then it's legal but that is not stopping you from wanting to try cocaine because marijuana was so good oh my god my creativity is yeah because i don't think addiction has anything yeah, to no, do with the, the pe- law no first of all marijuana doesn't release the same neurochemicals as it's the other substances completely different. it's totally different what i'm saying is the ones who wants to try everything you can't stop them but there are plenty of people who only proceed to the harder drugs because of these connections because they have blurred that lines of legality ones and this is why like states that have legalized it or countries that have legalized it have like safer use in general and people with so in uk marijuana is illegal but you have these guys that are addicted to like street drugs like speed meth all of that's on the rise but in canada marijuana use is really high because it's legal but the other drugs are less So you think it should be legalized in India? I mean See, it, I think again like you can't semi. you can't apply a study from another country to a country like India because the 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 demograph that we have like just the sheer population itself makes everything so hard to monitor and control and administer right so you can't really just blanket wise apply a study and say it'll work in India but just because it's worked in canada for instance it's not necessary it'll work in a place like india right i mean but marijuana is like kind of like medicinally you have certain what, forms yeah, of, of it that like is if you're legal a in india patient, already for instance you are allowed. i mean in india like it's yeah. legal already yeah. so orissa for instance is a state where things are legal so um but i don't know i'm i'm anti drugs like through and through i've never understood i've never felt the need to i've never especially like the one trigger i have is when people who go to art school say I need to consume so I can be in this state of mind and visualize. That's just this. pretentious people. I just I don't understand. <laughs> in general, pretentious. Because then your art is not your art. <laughs> no, right? I it's the marijuana. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, that I is just, just never, a pretentious. I, and thing I know to say like a general. bunch of people who say that. Like it's just like doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I don't know if it's me being ignorant, but no, I'm anti drugs too. As you know, I'm, I'm a medical student. Why do you keep saying as you do? No one is arguing with me, bro. What do you mean? That's you're my friend. Don't lie. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything about but you. But you're a close friend. You two, we just met. I don't know where you go right <laughs> just after just this. Maybe you're going to be. Just because my Instagram is private. <laughs> maybe you go right after this for your I'm fix. I'm getting dinner with you after fix. this. <laughs> maybe you're going right after this for your fix. Two strangers in a podcast. We're going to French toast. <laughs> yeah, for your fix. <laughs> to meet your yeah, dealer. It's the ice latte. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ice latte. I'm an ice latte. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, but yeah. No, I think. See, I think it's a hard. Like, it's a hundred percent gateway drug because, like, for example, a person who gets into, uh, like, alcohol, right? For example, what is the alcohol culture like? I I can't say for other countries I can only say for a certain city like Cochin because I did my 11th and 12th year. It's a culture thing. Uh, a kid in a school um in Cochin when they are in 8th or 9th grade will see their seniors drinking uh, 10th grade 11th grade 12th graders. So they're like okay that is uh, you attribute that as cool. So by the time you reach high school you you what do you do you don't first take one whole bottle of vodka and then gulp it down you won't be able to do that so one first you have one sip like your dad's drinking you have one sip then next time you feel a bit more emboldened so you have one more glass and that's how so it's it's a gradual increase which is exactly what marijuana so is so you're like. saying alcohol is also like a gateway substance in oh, 100% this. 100% okay, then that i agree with anything like, that alters your like, mind yeah. like yeah, like, like nobody is going to snort like i don't know i don't know how much <laughs> cocaine you have to snort but like like 10 grams of cocaine in the first go they start Yo. with like the first time what you for your opinion you mean non drug you talk about oh, that that brand money really really big huh? so it's like 10 <laughs> grams bro <laughs> i don't know i don't know if that's a lot no enough. i mean see like i understand your point you no i don't uh, consume it we don't <laughs> no but uh, like i understand what you're saying but um i don't know if i can generalize it saying it is a gateway drug but i can't say it's not also I've seen some of my friends who did coke for the first time in a party. <gasps> so those people who would have done done coke. Name names. <laughs> those they're all my friends. Bro, we, can fuck. we get in trouble for this? I don't know, we'll find out. We'll fuck around and find out. I mean, 
Okay, yeah, anyway. <laughs> fuck. You can't fuck around and find out. Guys, I don't know about that. Welcome, welcome, to, welcome to this fictional, this is not a podcast episode. Can you speak louder? <laughs> the hypothetical Sex, episode. Sex, drugs and money. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so the people who did coke at that party and who did coke at that party, that kid wouldn't have been me because I'm not I'll I'll give you giving you a reason. If an older person comes and says, "Hey, let's go to Coke in the bathroom," it's not going to be me who says yes to it because I haven't even tried weed. So I'm like, "Fuck!" Like in my head, Coke seems like a fucking far away scary place. So I'm like, I don't want to feel that because I haven't even done pot. So why should I go to Coke? But the people who usually would say yes is people who have been smoking for some time. They've understood it. You know, if you smoke up, this is what you feel, and this is how you'll behave, and this is. what the next 5 6 hours of your life is going to be so they're like okay let's try coke for the first time so that's how it starts at one party it's like just one of your f- really close friends saying hey guy bro just like let's start one line who, who gives a fuck and and you know that the gradual is just downward from that downward yeah. slope from there so i don't know i've just i've never understood the concept of drugs like even like when it comes to like taking medicines for me i kind of like try to avoid it as much as possible so drugs is like a whole different sphere but but there's a funny story <laughs> where uh, i i've consumed drugs once in my life <laughs> let's talk about that <laughs> only let's talk once about the drug like, and the incident i'm extremely anti drug like okay all my heroes i mean i i guess they don't do drugs i don't know i'm not in their houses <laughs> but like i have always looked up to people who don't do no, drugs no but the story is very fucked up yes yeah. you yeah. were tricked into doing yeah, it, it that was, is this, fucked up yeah it's very fucked up because i was very sick i went to a house party and uh, there were pot, pot brownies at this house party and I was already sick that day. So when this person came and gave me some brownies, I thought it was normal brownies. And uh when I ate the brownie she gave me, it tasted like shit. But <laughs> she's a like usually she doesn't like a bake, bake. She doesn't bake stuff which is great. So I was like, "Ah, this is our normal stuff." Who is this person? I no, you can't name. obviously can't name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, "Ah, okay, this is uh, normal." <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. And then over the course of the evening, it was night. like people kept giving me like, hey sharan have one more piece have one more piece and i can see one of my friends having this with ice cream and i in my head i'm like there's no way and i can hear conversation and bro i can see somebody eat it with the fucking ice cream i'm like there's no way because i can hear people giggling i can like this is a li- like 20 30 people and then everything starts like i have never like in for me i'm like drugs are beneath me like i feel like i'm too good for this <laughs> so <laughs> Like, we didn't have to open that door but yeah, okay so so for me like suddenly everything is going slow okay all the conversations are becoming really far away i'm feeling like my motion is becoming slow so in my head i'm thinking all these people are going to trick me you start getting paranoid yeah i get paranoid because i think these people are tricking me they just want me to like scream out loud saying fuck you guys gave me pot brownies but and then they say haha we fooled you but you understood it was no i didn't understand i went to the bathroom i washed my face some 15 times nothing is happening i'm crying slow and everything yeah no i just this is not the point i was crying and then i started walking and my legs started becoming heavy and then i just like slammed myself on the floor like i just fell and then i realized when they picked me up when everybody picked me up they were all panicking so they picked me up they put me on a seat and it's like four of us talking okay they know i am fucking high also each person came and gave me one so it is not like this guy was like oh that guy gave so this, i shouldn't give everybody thinks they gave me one but That's they give evil. me 10 so it's like four of us sitting okay and uh, you guys are talking and this is the only time i felt where i will zone in and out of conversations like i am part of this conversation then suddenly i am outside outside <laughs> and <somewhere>. the universe <laughs> yeah <laughs> then i will come back in <laughs> and then i was, so i wanted to talk to the guy who owns the house cuz he was a close friend of mine so i was like i need to talk to this guy because then by the time i was fucking pissed off because i knew what was going on so i said guys i need to go inside and talk to the guy who house it is so they like okay and they all got up and they left and i'm just sitting there <laughs> because i can't walk <laughs> and they all look back they like sharan come i said i I can't. I walk. want to, but my body is not. So they had to pick me up, take me into the room where this guy was. <laughs> my Godfather. Yeah. 
<laughs> you come to my house. house. Playing in my brain. Yeah. And you then I house. sat there and then I asked him why he did what he did. And then he, like, this guy is a very sweet guy. Now we are good friends. But like, th- at that point of time, it was really fucked up. And he I mean, had nothing to say. Up, but yeah. Yeah, and then I, mean, I started crying and my into... mom called and like my body was hurting and it was just so fucked. Like, so wait, one second. So, oh, there's, there's, a fun, there's a really small... So this guy and me, we play FIFA a lot. So he's panicking so hard and he knows how much I love FIFA. So he gives me a controller in my hand. Okay, they suddenly all, all of them are treating me like I'm a kid. <laughs> okay, <laughs> They give me a controller and they're like, Shut up, let's play, let's play. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So he gives me the controller and I'm looking at the screen. And then he chooses Real Madrid and he gives me some shitty team and I'm like, motherfucker, <laughs> you have given me pot brownies and you want me to play this shit. Wait, so when you had the first piece, <laughs> yeah. did people see you eat it? Yeah. Nobody Everybody's, stopped you still? No. That's fucked up. Yeah, it was fucked up. And I'm like, I threw the controller and they, they got <laughs> even more scared. <laughs> and dude, all the things my friends told me which happens when they're high... I could feel it. It was like, you know, the Sherlock Holmes thing when you know, when he says... 3.5 minutes. Yeah, yeah. minutes. I'm like, mouth parched. I need water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, give me water, guys. <laughs> okay? So, this is... He's attained Nirvana. <laughs> okay, so this is... Everybody is standing here. They're fucking freaking out. He's st- sitting here and there's one more friend sitting here. They're the only ones who are the balls to like face the situation. So, one of them, when I said, I need water... And I, I'm furious. So they, they're not understanding. So he, this guy comes, takes the glass. There's a glass of water there in on the table. So he takes the glass and he brings it to me. I want a new glass of water. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally picture you. And I'm only talking like this because my lips are so dry and I'm so angry and I can't function. Yeah. And then... Uh, then they all like scampered and they got me a new glass of water. So they, 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 I drank it. And like in between, obviously these are all friends who are also high and drunk and whatever. So they're finding things funny. So they're cracking some really funny shit. <laughs> but I'm like, if I laugh at this, then they will not take me seriously. So every time they crack a really funny joke, I start laughing. Okay. I'll be like, and then I will, I'll have to stop this laugh. So this I, scaring me. like I do this. <laughs> You to audio listeners, he's making faces right now. And they will think I'm losing it. <laughs> they think that something has happened to me. <laughs> They're panicking. But I'm trying to stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Some Jacqueline Hyde shit. This yeah, could be a Christopher know. Nolan movie. <laughs> yeah, that was quite... No, that's that, fucked that's up, fucked man. Up. Yeah, that was fucked up. I'm, I'm sorry you had to go through that. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Okay, on that very sad note, <laughs> let's call it a day. On that very illegal note. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was that was a fun experience, which I wouldn't want to experience again. I just think it's cruel and evil. I mean, it was fucked up, it was anyway. fucked up, but like it happened. No. Yeah. Now it's a fun podcast story. Okay, we will... Wrap it up. Wrap it up? Yeah. Wrap it up, Shah. Say thanks, oh, Austin. Oh, Put the rap. He's big <laughs> again. Do you have another problem? I want water. <laughs> <laughs> guys thank you for watching this episode uh, it was a lot of fun shooting so I hope you guys had fun watching we'll be back next week uh, send us uh, questions right in the comment section interact with us we'll make sure you guys are heard okay lots of love to you guys bye see you don't do drugs yeah and we get caught do <laughs>